What? A third Yeti bike release in the same month? Yep. An embarrassment of riches for sure, especially if you're in the market for a new bike and you want a Yeti. So if you've been paying attention, you've seen the new fastest f rated to crush every EWS race, Yeti SB160. You've also seen the most capable XC slash trail slash ride whatever slash race whatever bike that's come out in the SB120. And you've probably figured out they need to revamp the venerable and all around fan favorite SB130. Well, smarty pants, you're correct. Today, we have the all new Yeti SB140. And you might be saying, but Poncho, doesn't Yeti already have an SB140? Yep, they sure do, but this one's a 29er. So why on earth would Yeti release a new bike with basically the same name as a the bike they already have? Well, officially I can't tell you because then they'd stop letting me visit to talk about new bike stuff and I'm not ready to give up that perk. So you're gonna have to figure it out on your own. But since you're so smart and already figured out what bike was coming next, I'm sure you can figure out the reason behind this overcomplicated, confusing naming system they got going on right now. Let me know in the comments what you think is gonna be the solution to this silly problem. Okay, let's jump into the history lesson. If you don't like this bit, then just fast forward to the interview with Strava King, Chris Heath. He has eight f***ing pages of KLMs. Here we go. Mall year 2005 brought us the 575, a trail bike with, yep, 5.75 inches of rear travel that gave unparalleled confidence through some of the roughest lines. This bike, however, was not without its quirks as it had this sort of knuckle that joined two tubes to make the top tube and carbon flex pivots in the seat stays to increase compliance and traction. I guess that's the type of thing they did to make up for the sh shocks they had back then. I don't know. Oh! 575 lasted a whole decade in Yeti's model lineup, where it shared the last few years of its life along the SB5C, which eventually replaced it entirely for 2016. With 127 mm of travel, front derailleur compatibility, both internal and external dropper riding options, removable ISCG tabs, this bike could be built however your dirt-loving heart desired. Yeti described the SB5C as, quote, the interpretation of what a trail bike should be, lightweight, great pedaling uphill, and a screamer going down. This bike will make you smile. This mantra was very much the foundation for this bike and everything that came after. Model year 2019 gave us the crowd favorite SB130. I mean, what can I say about this bike that hasn't been repeated a million times? I'm kind of a big deal. Yes, it's the one bike, the quiver killer, the bike to rule them all. Do a six hour trail ride, take it to the bike park, ride with your XC buddies one day and your knuckle dragon DH pals the next. This is probably our best selling trail bike ever and for good reason. It was the bike I would point to and ask, hey, what trail bike should I buy? That one. And now we arrive at the SB140, and some of you skeptics may say, hey, they probably just made a 140mm to keep up with the other brands. Wrong. The real story is the SB140 was designed to really be the lunch ride bike. And if you don't know the story about lunch ride, it's really just how Yeti employees set their bikes up to go on their lunch loop. But I digress. Essentially, the old SB130 chassis was more capable than the amount of travel they gave it. So they had to travel by 10 mil to really lean into the bike's ability. Now, before I dive too deep into it, let's jump into my interview with Chris Heath over at Yeti HQ. <laughs> How's it going guys? Welcome again back to Yeti. We are here on release day for the SB140, replacing the SB130, the tried, true, classic. Um, they refined the 130 to make an even better version of it. Um, the, what we call the quiver killer or what has been known as the quiver killer in our store. Um, the 130 was one of, if not the best selling trail bikes we have. Um, and now it's better. So Chris, thanks again for having us for, thanks for being here. here at Yeti. It's, it's been awesome. Um, and we are very excited, uh, again, obviously, about the new 140. Um, let's get right into it. So, yeah, SB140, here it is. Go buy one. Can we end it there? Yeah. yeah. I mean, that's, I mean, that's, that's, that's really it. About, yeah. right? like, no, I mean, there's, <laughs> there's really no reason to not, right? Like, you need a new trail bike. This is, this is the one. You know what I want to touch on first is the color. This color is amazing. <laughs> um, they call it Sangria. And... The video will not do justice. The photos you see online will not do it justice. In person, it is fantastic. Yeah, no, I appreciate that. It's it's a pretty cool color. You know, obviously we we always like to deviate a bit from the norm. You know, obviously Yeti turquoise. You know, going to be everywhere. You know, it's it's Can't get part of our brand ethos. It's in our in our blood. Um, but we always like to throw in you know some wild colors here and there. We understand that people are going to want to branch out and not have a turquoise Yeti or yeah. a black Yeti or a raw, you know, however. Um, so yeah, Sangria is pretty rad. Um, you know, we've also got Sage, which is a pretty cool color in this sage bike. Sage you know, is awesome. We went kind of deep in this one, um, just given that, you know, given the uh, the amount of customers this bike speaks to. 
Um, so we wanted to provide plenty, plenty of options. Um, but yeah, kind of like you mentioned, you know, it's um, this is the Luntrad version here with that Flodex shock. This year for, for 23, the 140, um, both models, inline and Luntrad, um, get a uh, get 140 mil of travel. So in years past, as you kind of briefly mentioned, you know, we had the 130 and the 130 Luntrad, which is basically 130 out back on the inline bike, 137 out back on the Luntrad. And it was the same shock. You know, we, we had the Floatex or DPX or whatever shock we had at the time was on that bike. Um, this year, we um, separate that out by throwing the Floatex on the Luntride version and throwing the inline DPS on the uh, non Luntride version. Both have 140 mil of travel. Um, we do this, you know, and we did this because the bike is and the chassis is so versatile. Um, you kind of called it the quiver killer. You know, again, define it however you like. Um, choose whatever build or whatever, you know, um, setup suits you best as a rider. But the chassis is capable enough to handle, you know, more of that efficient trail riding um, or lunch ride version, take it to the bike park, um, ride your more aggressive trails, but it can still be your your one bike that you do it all with. Yeah, as much as I, I mean, I know I use it, but I, I can't stand the term quiver killer because <laughs> I feel like that's not a real thing. Um, but I understand that customers, like that sometimes they can only have one bike and that totally makes sense because these things aren't cheap. Um, but yeah, the the we sell a lot of uh, lunch rides the 140, 160 combo really works well for kind of where we are, where our stores are versus the trails that are around it. Um, so we do a lot of lunch rides, the longer travel fork, the 36, and then the bigger rotors, the burlier wheels and tires like really lend itself to a lot of the terrain that's around us. This year for 23, we kind of started the project as a lunch ride, if you will, you know, because the bike, it performed so well there. And then we kind of pared it down to get more, you know, to, to have it be more, uh, you know, well-mannered on the trail, if you will. Like, you know, just a little bit lighter, maybe a little bit snappier, you know, with that DPS shock, fit for 150 fork, just a little more, you know, trail-mannered, if you will. Right. Whereas lunch ride is gonna kind of be your, like like we mentioned, you know, just more aggressive, you know, your, your fringe to like, well, I'll take you to the bike park, it's gonna be fine, you know, like that kind of deal. So, um, and again, it shares all the same, you know, features that we've kind of touched on with the other models. Um, size specific rear end, um, size specific or size, yeah, size specific seat angles as well as you kind of grow in size. Um, that's going to give you a really balanced ride, um, put you in the middle of the bike, which is, which is rad. Um, co-molded threaded bottom bracket. Yep. I said threaded, which is pretty cool. Um, you know, kind of one of the things that a checkbox, if you will, that we felt like we needed to check. Um, cable captures here kind of for whatever you need, whether it's electronic, wired, um, and all that good stuff there. Um, you know, slight tweaks to the geo, you know, half a degree um, head angle wise. Uh, that puts you at 64 and a half or? Uh, that's gonna be 65, I believe. Um, yeah, 65, I believe, so. Ride quality is something that he takes very seriously and that's super apparent in all the things that got touched, right? So a whole new mold with all new hardware, new bearings, updated switch infinity, um, I know I'm missing stuff because there's a million things on the checklist that you guys touched. Literally everything. Yeah. So new, so new links. So this is a, you know, this is a, a part of the chassis that, that's pretty apparent once you look at it. You know, the older bikes, the links, the link kind of sat on the outside of the frame, right? Yeah. So now all the bearings are pressed into the links themselves, as opposed to being pressed into the carbon. Yeah. That's again, that's going to increase smoothness, increase efficiency, get rid of those tolerances, or really drill down those tolerances to the point where it's like you're not, you're not missing anything. There's nothing. Uh, there's no friction, there's no rubbing, you know, and all that lends to just an excellent ride quality and, and you know, superior trail feel. Yeah, and I love that all the bikes, uh, obviously including this one, are getting the shorter seat tube so you can run the longer dropper. I'm a yeah. big fan of, uh, I guess the large gets a 200 mil dropper, which is what I would use, and 200 mil droppers are what's up. Like, that's yeah, the way sure. to do it. And then sizing too, you know, going all the way up to extra large, double XL actually, um, you know, just accommodating. And again, that kind of melds well with that size for C2 angle and all that good stuff and, and rear ends as well. Like you're just, you know, you, as the bikes get bigger, um, you just sit in the middle of the bike, you're, you're more balanced. So we get asked all the time, hey, what trail bike should I buy? And it's a real easy thing to point to any 130, 140 travel bike, but we love to point to this one because it does so well. Um, you know, again, who is this bike for, right? Like it's easy to say, everybody who's watching this video but like it really is for everyone who's watching this video there's a use case for everyone i mean again why i mean i hate using the term equiver killer again it's like it can you can take it to the bike park you can ride your cross-country trails with it um i was just talking to a customer of ours who has one of these and you know she'll take it on a cross-country race and then the next weekend take it to downeyville 
and, yeah. and do laps. And this bike will, will do all those things. It's almost too easy to just call it a trail bike, but it's like you can almost call it a trail yeah. bike and then go over to Summit and ride one and decide for yourself, you know, yeah. because it's gonna speak to you and it's uh, it's gonna, you know, show you its trail manners. And, and I, you know, think everyone's gonna be pretty, pretty happy with what they, what they feel. Yeah, trail bike is a very broad term, but this bike right. covers yeah, a very broad right, spectrum right. of riding. So totally. Um, yeah, I mean, it's it's the everything bike, um, and and one that I think, you know, is super popular at Summit for a reason. We are going to sell a ton of these and come and ride one. So that's that's really the gist of it. Yeah. yeah. Well, thanks again, guys, for tuning in. Uh, this is the SB140. It's launch day. Come to the store. Check them out. Check out our website for for more information. Um, anything we can cover, I'm sure the spec is is out there. So thanks again. Thanks, Chris. Appreciate it. Yeah, yeah thanks for being here. We'll see, see you guys around. See you. Thank God for cuts. Thank God. It's nice. Dude, I could not get through this whole thing no, unscathed. No Impossible. Yeah,